Has this ever happened to you? You're hanging around at your local arcade when suddenly you see a guy going crazy on one of the machines. He looks super focused and is pressing a lot of buttons very fast. There's a high chance that this person is playing a music game. It's a niche kind of video game where you hit buttons to music and it isn't talked about often in the mainstream. It might look intimidating, especially when you see that guy playing in the arcade, but music games are really fun and really rewarding. I've been playing those kind of games for over a decade now and I absolutely love them and I think there's a good chance you might too. In this video, I'm gonna talk about a few things I learned throughout the years and take a look at some of the most popular games. The link of everything I show here can be found at the bottom right corner of the video as well as in the description. So let's start this. This is an introduction to music games. So let's start from the beginning. In a traditional music game, you start by picking a song and a difficulty from a wide selection available. The song starts playing and notes appear and go across the screen until they land on a receptor area. When you take all of the notes together, it forms what we call a chart or a beat map that you need to follow. So just like a piano partition, if the chart goes A, B, C, B, A, the player also needs to go A, B, C, B, A. It starts simple, but as you increase the difficulty, notes become more numerous, more complicated, and more dense. The chart becomes harder, but the game always stays the same. What makes it intimidating is that every difficulty is available from the start. Imagine you are playing a Mario game, but instead of playing 1-1, then 1-2, 1-3, and so on, every level is selectable from the start, including the final boss. And then imagine that you never played the game before. You can go straight to Bowser, but do you have the skills to do so? So it's not the kind of game that you can clear in a few dozen hours. It's the kind of game that you need to routinely come back to, weeks after weeks, months after months. The crazy guy at the arcade that you've seen has probably been playing for years. It's like an RPG, but instead of grinding levels, you are grinding your own personal skills at the game. So you keep going. You see yourself slowly getting better, and as you do, you also discover all of the content in the game hidden behind the difficulty. The game becomes bigger, more rewarding, and ultimately more fun. A good music game keeps being challenging even for the best players and makes them come back for more. So if you grew up in North America like me, there are two music games that you've probably heard of, Guitar Hero and Dance Dance Revolution. So let's start here. Guitar Hero is arguably the most popular music game with the biggest impact here in the West. It's unfortunate then that it's not a very good example of the genre. You see, part of being a music game is placing an emphasis on strict rhythm and accuracy. Almost every single music game has a timing system, that is to say they judge you based on accurate you are to the music. It's not enough to just hit the notes, you need to hit them on beat. So you see perfect, cool, great. Not Guitar Hero though. In Guitar Hero, you hit the note or you miss the note, that's it. And because of that, it lacks the depth and challenge that other music games have and it's usually considered more of a rockstar simulation game than an actual rhythm game. In contrast, Dance Dance Revolution shows its timing front and center. Instead of hitting a button with your finger, DDR asks the player to stand up and hit them with their feet. It became immensely popular thanks to its catchy music, social interactivity and being an actual great workout. In fact, it's still popular to this day, and I even had a small renaissance in 2016 with the release of DDR Ace. After playing some of the harder songs in the game, you will break a sweat. Hardcore players often look like they are headed for the gym, because that's usually what DDR is for them. Many people discovered the game on consoles with foldable mats in their living room, but any serious player will tell you that the real experience is in the arcade. In fact, the same is true of most rhythm games. The arcade version is always superior. The massive success of DDR started its own music game subgenre, the dance game. And of course, they started being competitors. In 2004, a group of American DDR fans grew frustrated by the lack of difficulty in the official games and decided to make their own. The result was In The Groove by Rockstar Games. It significantly bumped the difficulty of the songs and added some of its own ideas, like mines that you need to avoid and notes that require you to bend down and hit them with your hands. Following the big success of the game and its sequel in the Groove 2, Konami sued Rockstar for patent infringement. It won the case and Konami gained the rights for the series and immediately cancelled it. 
so the anticipated in the groove tree never officially came out. Nowadays, most of the ITG machines are privately owned, with players making their own custom songs for it, but the impact of the game cannot be understated. Many argue that Konami took inspiration from ITG Minds to create their own shock arrow mechanics. Konami would eventually release DDR Supernova in 2006, a game that would also be known for upping the difficulty. On the other side of the world, South Korea was also making its own dance game. In 1999, only one year after the first version of Dance Dance Revolution, and the Mirror released their game Pump It Up. Pump got around the patent problem simply by flipping the dance pad over and using the middle and diagonals instead of the cardinal directions. Instead of being based around strict timing like DDR, Pump is all about throwing crazy patterns at you and challenging the player to hit them all without missing a single one. In some ways, it's more difficult, but also more forgiving. The game celebrated its 20th anniversary this year and is still growing in popularity. It never really took off in Japan, but is very, very popular everywhere else in the world, especially Korea and Latin America. The latest version of the game includes a song called Conflict. Remember that one. But let's rewind a bit. Music games are not always about dancing. In fact, most music games are not, they just require you to move your hands. If you ever played a DDR console game, you might remember seeing this screen before the title. Bimani is the brand that includes all music games produced by Konami. You might not have known, but DDR is only one of the currently 8 active music series under the Bimani umbrella. To really talk about Bimani, we need to start with the game that gave it its name. In 1997, two years before DDR, there was Beat Mania. But it wasn't until the game received a sequel and became deluxe that the series really hits its stride. Beatmania 2DX is a freaking juggernaut. It's Konami's premium music game going strong for over 20 years. It is the most influential music game and started the careers of countless music artists and developers. It's essentially a DJ simulator with seven buttons and a turntable acting as an eighth button. Unlike the accessible DDR, 2DX has an extremely difficult learning curve. It's challenging to learn for beginners and only becomes more difficult as it goes on, getting to absurd levels. It's one of the hardest music games to get into, but once you do, you also realize that it might be the best. The amount of songs, options, challenges, alternate ways to play, the sheer quality of it all, it's second to none for an arcade game. In 2006, Konami tried to follow the success of their DDR console game by releasing Beatmania for the PS2. It was an outdated, watered-down version of the game with tons of missing content and bad American licenses. Video game reviewers called it a bad Guitar Hero clone, and Konami never released a 2DX game in the West again. Which is a shame, because in the arcade, it's the big daddy of them all. And there's a good reason that it's still going strong after 27 different versions of the game. If you're looking for a serious, hardcore, no-nonsense music game that will truly challenge you, 2DX is your game. But if Beatmania is a bit too much for you, you gotta always try poppin' music. This Bimani game was developed as a friendlier alternative to 2DX aimed at younger children. Are you ready? It has nine big bright colored buttons, colorful graphics, upbeat songs, and super cute characters. The funny thing, however, is that Poppin is also extremely difficult at high level. It has two more buttons than 2DX and requires more movement due to the size of them. Don't let its appearance fool you. The game will kick your butt. It's Dark Soul, this guy's just Hello Kitty. The next Bimani game is a rock simulator. Guitar Freaks and Drum Mania are two separate arcade games that could link and play with each other to simulate a band. They eventually fused together and became Guitadora. If you played Rock Band, you know what to expect. The guitar has five buttons and a strum, but the drum is significantly more complex. In addition to the four thumbs, you have two cymbals, a hi-hat, and two pedals to deal with, for a total of nine different keys. Just like other Bimani games, Guitadora has a bigger focus on timing and difficulty. 
Oh, and by the way, the first version of Guitar Freaks released in 1999. This is six years before Guitar Hero and eight years before Rock Band. Leave it to Japan to do it first. Sound Voltex, or SDVX, is a newer Bimani series that quickly grew to be very popular. The game has a futuristic boot style and distorts the music to match the effect on the screen. In addition to the four main buttons and two FX buttons, the game requires the player to turn two analog dials to follow a red and a blue laser along a vertical track. This creates very complex patterns and requires the player to cross their arms and multitask the two. It is very beginner friendly and is usually a fan favorite. Also, remember the song Conflict I mentioned earlier? It's in this game too. The next B-Money game is called U-Beat, and I will let George of Super Bunny Hop explain it for me. I love U-Beat. I first encountered it at a con in America, and it's still all over the arcades in Japan. It's a brilliant little rhythm game where the issue of syncing your hands on a controller with a stupidly fast lineup of on-screen button prompts is solved by making the screen your controller. So it's a touchscreen separated in a 4x4 grid that makes 16 individual buttons while the chart is being displayed on the controller itself. A version for mobile devices also exists. The latest Be Mighty game is called Dance Rush Stardom, or Dance Rush for short. Released in 2018, it is Konami's new alternative for a dance game, using a big dance platform with sensors instead of foot panels. It's a generally very easy game and encourages a freestyling and being stylish instead of score. Every year, Konami organizes the Konami Arcade Championship, its big Japanese competition for B-Money games. Instead of using the final scores like the other games, the Dance Rush winner was decided by popular votes for the best routine instead. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> The colorful floor also apparently makes a prime spot for Instagram models. There are more Bimini games we could talk about, like Nostalgia, Keyboard Mania, Musica, and Dance Evolution. But it's time to move on, because Konami is not the only player at the arcade. Arguably, the biggest developer of arcade music games right now is Sega, especially their Performai rhythm game. Their most popular game right now is called Tunitum. It plays with a long touchpad and motion sensors on top and asks the player not only to press the right notes, but also wave their hands in the air when necessary to hit hair notes. The game is designed to make the player do large gestures, a bit like a crazy pianist virtuoso. Just like Pump It Up and Sound Voltex, Tunitum also features the song Conflict. Mai Mai is another one of Sega's Performai games. It features a big circular touchscreen surrounded by a rim with 8 buttons. Instead of the nodes scrolling in a linear fashion, everything starts from the middle to the other rim. Most high-level players usually play with gloves as to reduce the friction. Because of the cabinet design, the ongoing joke is to call Mai Mai the washing machine game. Oh, and Conflict is also in this game. The last game in Sega's Performer series is called Ongeki. In addition to the standard music game gameplay, it also asks the player to steer characters to follow a track and avoid obstacles at the same time. It's a strange mix of rhythm and driving. The game uses two sets of three buttons, two wall buttons on each side, and a middle joystick to control the characters. And just like the last two, Conflict is in there also. Outside of those three, Sega is also responsible for the Vocaloid music game. Atsune Miku Project Diva is a long-running series of games for arcades as well as PlayStation consoles and handhelds. The main focus of the series is on the very detailed 3D videos and dances performed by the various characters. It makes the gameplay harder to see, but much more fun for onlookers. Some of the games also include elements of dress-up and dating simulators. It is generally not considered a hardcore music game, but is very popular due to the popularity of the vocalist themselves. There are some other notable music games in the arcade, like Namco's Taiko no Tatsujin. Known here as Taiko Drum Master, it's a music game based on the traditional Japanese Taiko drum. 
The gameplay is extremely simple and only consists of two different notes. The red don played by hitting the drum and the blue ka played by hitting the rim of the drum. The game's simplicity, however, doesn't prevent it from being challenging, as harder songs become very fast and very dense and requires a mastery of alternating arms. There's also a lot of anime and video game licenses, making it a great game for both casual and hardcore players. Seriously, what other game has the Neon Genesis Evangelion opening, Jump Up Superstar, and Megalovania in it? In 2004, Namco released Taiko Drum Master for North America for the PS2. It was an outdated, watered-down version of the game with tons of missing content and bad American licenses. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Namco never released a Taiko game in the West again. Until 2017, when they released Drum Session for the PS4 and Drum and Fun for the Switch. Both games share the same content and song list as their Japanese releases, and thanks to that were very successful, selling more than 600,000 copies each. Who would've guessed, huh? The game is playable with buttons, small home drums, touchscreen, but like every music game, the arcade version is always the best way to play. It has a huge variety of songs, including anime openings, classical songs, children ballads, and of course, conflict. Other notable arcade music games include Groove Coaster by Taito, where you follow and hit notes on a roller coaster like track by hitting and moving two oversized joysticks called boosters, and the newly released Waka by Marvelous Games, which seems to be like Trinitum but in a circular form instead. And both includes conflict, of course. Now here comes the unfortunate part of this video. All of the games we talked about so far are mainly arcade games, and with very, very few exceptions, all of them are only playable in Japan or Asia. This means you cannot play them anywhere else, and you also cannot import them either. Every company has their own dedicated online services for their games, and require access to that network for the game to even play. So Konami Games have eAmusement, Sega have EMI, Bandai Namco has the Bana Passport, Taito have their Nausicaa server. If you have a music game machine, but no access to the server, the game will simply not start. This also includes DDR. This is why your local cinema most likely owns an older version of DDR with no network, like DDR Extreme from 2002 or Supernova from 2006 instead of the new games. There are exceptions, of course. Pump It Up is an international game, as mentioned before, and so their AM Pass networks is available for all, making it a popular choice for arcades. If you live in the United States, Round 1 is a Japanese-owned arcade chain with over 35 locations across the country and 25 more coming in the future. They have access to a lot of the games mentioned, with online networks, card and everything. But I hear you. I'm not in Japan or in the US. What should I do? Well, there are open source simulators for a lot of the games, and you can find online third-party companies that make mock arcade controllers for some games. For example, Stepmania can simulate DDR, ITG and other dance games. Most of the Guitar Hero community has migrated to a simulator called Clone Hero that takes the foundation of the game and brings it up to speed with other hardcore music games by having stricter timing and more technical patterns. k Shoot Mania is a sound voltage simulator, 2DX has Lunatic Rave 2 and Bituraja, Taiko Jiro can play Taiko and so on. You can find more information about those if you are interested, but this video is an introduction to the original games only. And yes, this means I won't be talking about Osu. However, we can talk about the game it's based on, Osu Tatake Wendan, which is fantastic. Because yes, my friend, not every music game is in the arcade. Agents are... GO! More known here as Elite Beat Agent, it's a very fun and very funny DS game about helping a group of secret agents or male cheerleader as they help people with their day-to-day -day problems with the power of dance and music. The player uses a touchscreen to tap, drag, and spin to the beat. Nintendo handhelds have never been the best place for rhythm games, but the one other exception to this rule is Nintendo's own developed series Rhythm Tengoku or Rhythm Heaven. Made by the same team behind the WarioWare series, it's a collection of short midi games played on rhythm, and it's great fun for people of all ages. Honestly, I don't think I've ever met somebody that didn't like Rhythm Heaven. The last game in the series, Rhythm Heaven The Besto Plus or Mega Mix here in the West, 
came out for the 3DS in 2015 and the series has been dormant ever since. Fingers crossed for a Switch version? While handheld consoles have never been great for music games, they absolutely exploded on mobile devices. And no one has made it bigger than the Taiwanese company Rayarch. Their most popular series is Sidus, where the notes are completely statics and a black line scrolls up and down the screen as they need to be hit. It has a surprising amount of stories and world building for music games, and is split into different stories and characters. Conflict is also here. Voez is another Rayard game where the note falls down on different tracks, but the tracks themselves can move and change sizes. It has a more chilled out atmosphere, almost like a vacation. But my favorite has to be Demo. It's quite a simple music game based on piano songs, with a great art style and an absolute tearjerker of a story. Every song you play makes the central tree grow further, and you join Alice as she explores the mysterious place she woke up in and slowly puts the pieces together. And the music is just great. The Nintendo Switch version is the best by far, and the game is also getting reborn on the PS4 soon. It has a special place in my heart. And you bet it has conflict. Outside of Rayarch, there are a lot of mobile rhythm games, and they vary in quality. As is the nature with mobile games, microtransactions and gacha mechanics might be present, so do be aware of that. The last music game on mobile I want to talk about here is Arkea. Arkea is a mobile answer to Konami's Sound Voltex, only instead of lasers, the play area is split into normal notes below and sky notes above. Just like Sound Voltex, it requires some arm crossing and multitasking. Does it have conflict? Of course it does. This video is not a comprehensive list of music games, of course. There are many more games I didn't get to talk about, but before I'm done here, let me talk about some more games worth mentioning. DJ Max Respect is an anomaly in today's market. It's a hardcore Korean music game, available on home consoles worldwide, and is sold at full price, and it's worth every penny. It's a very traditional music game, similar to Beatmania in gameplay, where the player can choose an amount of key to play with, between 4, 5, 6, and 8. Respect is the last entry in the long-running DJ Max series that started in 2004. DJ Max as a whole has many different kinds of gameplay, but Respect can be played entirely on the DualShock 4 controller. It also includes most of the songs from all games, as well as new compositions. The base game contains 147 songs, and this number more than doubles when adding DLC songs, including collaboration songs from Girl Frontline, Guilty Gear, and other music games that we already talked about. It's a great game on every point, easy to access, and a great choice to get into the genre. You couldn't possibly make a video about music game without talking about Beat Saber. When it released in 2018, it was a neat virtual reality game where you cut and comic cubes with a lightsaber to the music. The base game includes 10 songs, with some paid DLC coming much later, but the game would never have become as popular as it did if it wasn't for the modding community. Players found the game so fun that on day one they were looking for ways to add their own songs to the game. The result made Beat Saber more like a simulator while also being its own game. Just like dance games, harder levels are a real workout. It's extremely fun, massively popular, and often a candidate for the best reason to own a VR headset. Speaking of VR, let's talk about Tumper. Tumper is weird. Developer Drool explains it as rhythm violence, and I kind of agree with that description. It's a blisteringly fast endless runner slash rhythm game with a really trippy art style and actually terrifying atmosphere. It's a strange marriage of horror and rhythm games with brutal difficulty, and somehow it's absolutely brilliant. There's nothing quite like it, and VR is recommended for maximum immersion and terror. Just make sure you have the nerve for it. There's also nothing quite like just ships and beats.
The game flips the idea of a music game upside down and asks up to four players to dodge the rhythm instead of hitting it. It plays more like a bullet hell, but every pattern is influenced by the beat of the song. It's full of personality, has great boss battles, and becomes really challenging as it progresses. I might be a bit biased because the developers come from my neck of the wood, but this is another great one that anyone can get into. And let's finish here with Superbeat Zonic. It's a spiritual successor to DJ Max, made by the same developers, with a user interface more similar to My My. It originally released for the PlayStation Vita and recently came back for modern consoles. It has a very unique feel and a great song list. It has probably the biggest collection of cranky songs, including Danger and Danger, Matador, Libero Ami, and of course... Thank you very much for watching. A special thanks to Rujo, DJ505, Krell, Winnipeg, Detronic, Angelou and Barry for help with fact-checking. I hope you guys learned a thing or two about the strange world of music games. And next time you see a crazy guy at the arcade, maybe give it a shot too. See ya!